Cardano, one of the most well-known projects in the cryptocurrency space. Cardano has been a staple in the top 10 total market cap rankings for years now. But is it just me? Or does Cardano feel like it's losing a bit of its edge, a bit of its sexiness, a bit of its appeal? Is it slipping? Are those other projects that are coming up the ranks going to eat Cardano's lunch? Well, today we're going to take a look at good old boy Cardano, figure out just what the heck is going on with this protocol. And of course, we'll be explaining Cardano in a way that is so simple that even your grandmommy can understand what the heck is going on here. However, before we do get started, I would like you to note, no one has paid us to make this video. The information that you will find contained in this video is provided to you for free for educational purposes. This is not a recommendation for you to go out and buy, sell, or hold Cardano's cryptocurrency ADA, okay? Furthermore, you can see my full risk statement because guess what? Investing in crypto is risky. You can lose all your money as well as my full portfolio disclosures in the description on YouTube or in the pinned comment on X. I don't currently hold Cardano, by the way. Now, Cardano's story goes back to 2013 when Vitalik Buterin and a small team were working on Ethereum. One of the computer programmers on that team was a dude by the name of Charles Hoskinson. The story goes that Buterin and Hoskinson had a project disagreement early on. So Hoskinson in 2014 went out on his own way and he founded IOHK, a blockchain research and engineering firm. Hoskinson and IOHK began working on Cardano back in 2015 and the blockchain officially launched in 2017. So Cardano is one of the Ethereum killers. We're talking about a select basket of crypto projects here that function in a very similar way to Ethereum does. They host smart contract applications, but are looking to take away Ethereum's dominant market cap share and part of their user base. So stuff like Binance Smart Chain, Solana, Avalanche, Polkadot, Near, and many others, obviously Cardano included. Now, like Ethereum and most of the other protocols that I just listed, Cardano is a decentralized layer one blockchain network that allows for developers to build applications on top of it. So we're talking decentralized finance, NFTs, gaming, decentralized identity services, and a bunch of other stuff. It's all done on Cardano. But at a high level, Cardano tries to separate itself out from the other Ethereum killer crowd in three different ways. Better research, tackling the big global issues, and higher performance metrics. So let's look at each. Cardano absolutely markets itself as the nerdy blockchain, okay? The blockchain for ivory tower intellectuals. The Harvard of blockchains, if you will. Now, to get a sense of what I'm talking about here, you can head on over to the uh, Cardano website, cardano.org slash research, and take a look around. And holy cow, man, if you get off on a bunch of like computer science white papers with weird words and complicated mathematic formulas, like you're going to love this place. References all over the place, of course, to literary greats as well. So, you know, maybe it's that floats your boat. Now, Maybe Cardano is the most researched and technically superior blockchain out there, right? And look, I haven't spent the last seven years poring over all of these papers. It's nerdy stuff to me. But my point is that at a minimum, Cardano really wants you to think that it is mega nerdy because it is mega nerdy. Next, what about tackling global issues? Well, Cardano is positioning itself to be a blockchain that solves real problems across important sectors like education, agriculture, government, and healthcare. Big stuff. Most of the concerns center around issues uh, particularly related to stuff like authenticity and verification. So we're talking about things like putting your university degree on the blockchain so that you can't, you know, fudge your resume or mess with results. And it can be easily verified by anyone around the world or tracking the origin of pharmaceuticals. So they're less likely to, you know, die from counterfeit medications. That sounds like a pretty cool use case, right? Main point here is that from a mission perspective, Cardano is 
pretty much on point and is exactly the opposite of your classic dog coin, right? This is all really cool stuff. So hats off to Cardano for pursuing those goals. I like it. Now, what about performance metrics? Well, if we compare Ethereum, Solana, and Cardano, we find that Cardano outperforms Ethereum dramatically, but also underperforms other Ethereum killers like Solana. Now, this makes sense, of course, given that Cardano was released a few years after Ethereum, but before some of the newer projects like Solana. And yeah, I know scaling stuff like Hydro will bump these numbers up. In fact, one thing with Cardano is that everything's taken a really, really long time to happen. We're talking some of the basic stuff here. To get staking took years. To get smart contracts took years. Hydra, a lot of the other things that are coming along, these are very long-term research projects. And that's kind of the Cardano motto. Go slow and try not to break things. However, the go fast and break thing blockchains have been having quicker progress than Cardano. So it's worth keeping that in mind. We should also keep in mind that basically all these projects are promising more upgrades uh, in the future, better performance metrics in the future. So all the other major layer on blockchains have stuff coming. So the statistics are constantly changing as worth keeping that in mind. Now diving into the technicals, we're only going to really be diving into Cardano's Ouroboros proof of stake consensus mechanism. There's a lot of stuff we could unpack, but let's just focus on this for today. Similar to other proof of stake systems, Ouroboros is an algorithm that selects a validator at random to process each of Cardano's blocks. However, the algorithm itself randomly changes over time, which apparently provides more security to the network because of the extreme difficulty in anyone actually trying to be able to predict how the algorithm is going to change. And Ouroboros, by the way, is the ancient symbol of a snake eating its own tail, which is pretty cool, to be honest. A lot of cool stuff, cool references in the Cardano ecosystem. Again, you know, one of those fun historic uh, metaphors that just represents so much of what Cardano's about, right? The nerds behind it. Now, let's talk about Cardano's native token, ADA. The token has three use cases, staking, transaction fee payments, and governance. Now, ADA has a maximum supply of 45 billion tokens. The initial allocation broke down with 57% uh, going to uh, early investors, 11% to the team, and 30% reserved for staking rewards. Currently, 35 of the 45 billion have been released out into public circulation. ADA is currently inflating at 5.42% annually. This will decline over time with all 45 billion tokens released into circulation in about a hundred years. We won't be around to see that, but it'll happen at some point. And as you can see from the supply schedule, the tokens allocated to the public sale and team have already been released with those reserved for staking rewards all that are left to be unlocked for the coming, well, 100 years, right? All right, now, before we continue, I want to let you know about something very important. Let me interrupt the flow real quick because I'm going to let you know about the best damn newsletter in the cryptocurrency business. That happens to be my newsletter. It's called Wealth Mastery. Every single week, we are bringing you the latest and the best money-making insights on airdrops, altcoin news, deep dives, NFTs, technical analysis, cryptocurrency memes, and much, much more. You can join 125,000 plus weekly readers and sign up for free. Yes, for free using the link down below in the description or in the pinned comment on X. Now let's talk about partnerships. Cardano does shine here. Just a few days ago, Emergo, which is a tech firm affiliated with Cardano, kind of the VC arm of Cardano, if you will. They partnered with GSR in order to help grow out the Cardano ecosystem. GSR is a global trading firm and liquidity provider. In April, Emergo also announced a partnership with Huawei Cloud in order to expand the Cardano network across the uh, Asia-Pacific region. In March, Dubai Police, pretty cool, Dubai Police announced a partnership with Cardano with their uh, criminal investigations unit. Specifically, the Dubai Police plan to use the blockchain to securely share data with regards to different criminal investigations that they're doing. That's really cool. I like that. And in December of last year, the Cardano Foundation also partnered up with Brazil's state 
owned oil company, Petrobras, to explore blockchain technology as it relates to the energy sector. This is all really cool stuff. And to be clear, these are very, very big partnerships. So hats off to Cardano for continuing to secure regularly these kind of big partnerships. Now, if you continue to sift through the news articles, you'll find Cardano routinely makes partnerships in alignment with their mission of solving larger global problems. None of this stuff solved overnight. This is all slow burn stuff for Cardano, which is their Cardano ethos, really. Now, what about Cardano ecosystem statistics? When we look at the total value locked on the network, Cardano actually ranks 23rd with $278 million locked on chain. At the time of recording, these metrics change every five minutes, so just keep that in mind. If we filter by the number of unique addresses that have interacted with the blockchain in the past seven days, Cardano ranks all the way down at number 30. Ouch. And if we filter by the number of deployed applications, Cardano is in 23rd place. Not what you'd expect for a blockchain that's usually in the top 10 by market cap and one that's been around for, well, since 2017. So with those stats in mind, let's talk risks and opportunities. The first risk, of course, that I see is Cardano's ecosystem rankings are kind of not aligned with its total market cap. Cardano ranks in the 20s and 30s across major key ecosystem statistics and metrics, but about 10th in total market cap most days. Unfortunately, I don't feel like that's a great indication speaking objectively here cardano could be overvalued and underperforming versus blockchains that actually have much lower market caps but many more users total value locked uh, more applications all that kind of stuff second risk of course is cardano's price action here's the historic chart of cardano and i hate to say it but it's not giving me great vibes right now i know we're early in the cycle please i understand and the price will probably still see a big rally when the broader altcoin space really starts picking up and exploding. But shouldn't you want more? Compare the Cardano chart to Solana right now, a blockchain that was launched years after Cardano and has almost returned to previous all-time highs this early in the cycle too, which is very noteworthy. So for Cardano, where's the hype? Where's the attention? Where are the builders? Why are there not more developers showing up to build on Cardano? Why is everyone going over Solana? Why are user stats still so low? And I know there's a lot going on at Cardano, guys. I understand. It's much more than the scope of a short video like this can cover. There's the Midnight Sidechain. There's the Bitcoin Cash Partnership. There's Ethiopia. Is that, is that still a thing going on? Ethiopia. Exploring more in depth what Hydra does. Looking at some of the Cardano dApps, the NFTs, the meme coins. I mean, there is stuff happening on Cardano. But it's just not happening to the level that makes sense for the market cap when compared to other coins, at least not to me anyway. So what about opportunities? Look, I really like Cardano's focus on tackling these big real world problems. There aren't a lot of other projects that seem to make this a priority. So it's great that someone's actually talking about it and doing it. So if Cardano achieves major success in this area, it could be a huge game changer for the network itself and bring a lot of value in. Second, big fan of Charles Hoskinson and really the larger Cardano community. Hoskinson is a very interesting and inspiring leader for his blockchain. I like Charles. I've talked to him many times and I respect what he does. And Cardano holders are very committed to the vision of Cardano and are patiently waiting for all this stuff to happen. And this is great and it helps give the network a buffer when it's going through those hard times. So respect to all that. But to sum up what I'm thinking, I'm really hoping that Cardano achieves that long term success. It is a slow burn blockchain project, okay? Because I'm a fan of what Cardano is doing. They have that big vision and that big vision stuff should be part of crypto. But cards on the table, I'm not currently investing in Cardano right now due to my concerns about Cardano's ecosystem statistics compared to its market cap. And from ADA's larger price action that we're seeing right now, Cardano fans, Feel free, please tell me where I'm wrong in the comments. Tell me why you're bullish on Cardano right now. I'm sure you guys will let me know all about it down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video.